Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking, and we've got a special look at a game coming out next week on the 22nd of January, and uh, this is Football Tactics and Glory, or as it's called in America, Soccer Tactics and Glory, so you get the uh, the full Americanization there, as this is obviously a soccer game, not an American football game, um, good old English football soccer. This one comes from Raylight Games and Creo Team. And is published by Toplitz Productions. Will cost you thirty-five pounds ninety-nine, thirty-nine dollars ninety-nine when it releases. As I say, on the twenty-second. So what I'm going to do is have a quick look at this. It's um, been on Steam for quite a while. It's a game that I've uh, followed on Steam. Uh, never actually played it myself. Just been through the uh, introduction, a little sort of uh, intro setting, and a little quick tutorial. Um, just before we get into the, the game and I'll show you around it, just to show you here, there is multiplayer and that is online as well. So you've got online multiplayer where you can play matches against uh, friends and uh, random people from around the world. You can also do a single match or actually organise a tournament, which is absolutely excellent. Um, there are very, very few management games that let you play online. Now, whilst I think this is just you play the arcade part against your friends, so the uh, the, the actual match itself... It's still really nice to see in a in a sort of tactical game, so really pleased with that. Um, it's also got a really good editor in. So let's have a look at the editor before we get into the game. Now you've got all of these countries um, that are represented in the game, and each of these has got leagues. The game isn't licensed, which uh, if wasn't obvious, um, just to confirm, it isn't licensed. But when you go into a league, I'm just going to look at England because obviously that's the the league that I follow here in the UK. Um, you can change the, the name of the league, you can also change the teams, and whilst again it's not licensed, I think they've done a pretty good job. I mean, you've got kind of the Pro Evolution Soccer name in here, so you know, White London FC for Tottenham, uh, what we got, London FC for Chelsea, Liverpool Park FC for Everton, and so on. But as you can see here, there's lots of teams, you've got 18 teams in the Premier League, you can actually change that up here, you can change the name of it. Um, Actually, I thought you could change how many t how many teams are in there. Oh, you can change how many teams are in there. I think, possibly. Yeah, there you go. So twenty. But we'll keep it eighteen for now. But I'm just basically going to show you. This. You can fiddle around with this to your heart's content, and you can edit in every single detail of the club. So the name, the badge, the kits, the players, and uh, just to show you here, you've got the Premier League of eighteen teams. The Championship's got sixteen teams. Uh, second division's got 14 teams. Third division's got 12 teams. And if you look lowly down here, they've even got an amateur league where I find my beloved South End, uh, eight teams in that division. But from what I can work out, you can drag these teams around and drop them elsewhere. So I would imagine, and I've not tried this, but just from what I've seen from very early days, you should be able to get a pretty good recreation of the English four divisions and probably drop this amateur division by, you know, expanding the other divisions above it. 68. So you can't do all four divisions exactly. There's only 68 teams. We're in the UK at the moment. We have 91 um, in our top four divisions. But either way, you're going to be able to get a reasonably close representation. If your team's not here, you can edit them in over someone else. Take, I don't know, Wickham out or something. Put your own team in. Um, so let's go into an, an editor. As I say here, you can edit the kits pretty decent kit editor obviously change the color change the style of the kits There's lots of different styles of shirt really really cool even got these like gradient shirts here that are quite popular in the UK at the moment uh, change the shorts the socks even the boots really cool and you can rotate the players around as you look at them there you've also got home away jersey and goalkeeper jerseys Editing in this game is just like one of the best editors I've seen. And here are the, the player editors. And you see at the bottom there, you've got the on the right stick, you can use a random squad or a custom squad. Now, when you go to custom squad, you can actually then edit all of these details about a player. So you can edit their face. You can remove their face. I guess that's remove the player. Um, you can generate a random face. And you can even generate a random face, but with... Um, a sort of ethnicity 
if I pronounced that right. But you know, for example, if I press Asian, it will create a random, more Asian looking face or an African or a sort of a European looking randomized face, which is really cool. And then you can go in and just edit them as well. So you can tweak them. You've got all these settings across the top. So you can edit generally or the head, eyebrows, eyes, nose, ears, cheeks, mouth, chin, or just generate your own. And then within each of those, you've also got lots of options as well. So absolutely jam packed with editing options absolutely superb stuff really really like this it's going to go back into the editor it's going to take a little while because there's lots to edit you've got to um, keep an eye on the bottom to to sort of figure out the controls a little bit tricky to to get your head around but i'm sure after a few minutes of editing you'll get it uh here you can change the position of a player and as we tab across you can change their stats so i can change the number of accuracy passing uh, defending, controlling the overall level between 1 and 100, the age. You've got special skills here as well, which we'll come to in a minute when we get to the match. So you can give players these skills. Um, shirt number is that, customization. You can even copy and paste players as well. So absolutely no end of options there to edit your teams in. Really, really cool. Love that. I love editing. So I will be spending plenty of time in that. You can also change tournament names. So again, focus on the UK here. You've got Premier League, First League, Second League. You can change those if you want. Change the cup names. Change the region you're playing. And it uh, looks like you can change... What is this? Oh, it looks like it's just literally just changed the text of what you know the leagues are called. So if you want to call the leagues divisions, you can do that here. So excellent stuff. Really well thought out. We're going to quit out of that. But as I say, you know, you've got every country that you can go into here. So Scotland, have got all the Scottish teams, two divisions, three divisions, four divisions, and an amateur league. And that just carries on all the way down through all of these countries. I don't think, oh, there is a United States. Let's have a quick look at United States for you American fans. So you've got the uh, MLS here, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Columbus. And again, split into multiple divisions. Look at the amateurs here. Honolulu FC, Anaheim, the Mighty Ducks, Wichita. So, yeah, really cool. Love the editor. I think we've uh, spoke about that to death. But just to really ram the point home that, you know, you can edit so much in this game, which is really cool. And as I say, you've got single player, which I'm already started on. So we're going to go into that in a second. Multiplayer and then the editor. So let's carry on with our league that I've uh, been playing on. Um, here's your main menu. You can press uh, left stick down anytime to get help. Another really good thing in this game is this UI. I think it's excellent. You've got so much help. If you always look to the top of the screen, there's always hints about what your cursor's pointing at. So if you get stuck, it's really cool. Minus button here. And it's got an absolute wealth of information. So if you're not even sure um, how to play soccer, You've got all the details here. You've got all the details about how the game plays, all the intricacies of this game. It's going to take a long while to read and learn about this game. It's absolutely jam-packed with content. Um, so that's the match and actions. Tab across the top here for skills and talents. Tells you about what the skills are and how they work. Little images there as well. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Different sorts of classes of footballer and their positions. Economics and the tournament. So how you earn money, glory, uh, sponsorship, fans, how transfers work. And then here, coaches' notes. These are basically the messages that pop up in the game and are sort of archived here as well as some other information. So again, super cool. Great UI. Really clear to read. Absolutely excellent. Well thought out. Really polished, I think is the word I'm looking for. They've done a great job in this port from the PC to the Switch. Pressing the R button brings up like an email system. So you've got details here when things happen in the game. So this here at the moment is telling you the transfer window's open. Uh, the next message here is about the cup, just basically saying we've been entered into it. And our first match is against Rochdale on the 20th of August. And in here is information about who is going to be in the European Cup from our country. So Manchester, uh, Manchester City, Manchester United, Tottenham, Liverpool, Chelsea, uh, West London FC. Oh, I guess it's Arsenal, Chelsea and Burnley. So that's really cool. You've got this really nice badge uh, system in the middle here to see who your next match is against. 
I uh, didn't really touch on it in the editor, but you can edit the badges, and they had, again had a lot of options. And you can see here, these aren't the exact badges for Southend and Wickham, but they're close enough. You're going to get a really, you know, you'll get the feeling of it being licensed. You know, these aren't too far away from the real badges of the actual team. So, again, if you want to go in and edit those even further, you can do, but I'm just loving the amount of detail that is in this game. So, across the bottom, you press X to bring up the transfer list. So this is like a wish list, and if you press ZR, you can get a scouted list from all the different divisions. We've not set the scout up yet, um, but you can send him out and see who is available in all the other divisions. But these, as I say, are just been recommended to us and put on our personal wish list. Press Y on any player, you get their profile up. So these are all the different players from Fleetwood. And you can buy them now. And if you press Y, here are the league tables. Obviously, no match has been played yet. But you can, again, tab across here for all the competitions. And if you go back to the league, you can R and L tab across to see the actual different divisions in your country. So, super cool. So, I think that's enough detail about the uh, how the game works in the UI. What is Football Tactics and Glory? Well, Football Tactics and Glory is probably the game that if somebody sat me down personally and said, give me your ideal game, I would probably come up with something not a million miles away from this. I love football, I love football management games, I love turn-based strategy games, and I love board games. And that is pretty much soccer tactics and glory, football tactics and glory, I'm gonna call it from now on. All of those elements make up this game. Now, if we just go into a match, hopefully we can get straight into the match here without too much fiddling around. We're going to change Wickham's kit just so it's a, a red because Southend's kits are both blue, which isn't ideal. So before we go on, when you play a match, you can either play it out yourself, which I'm going to do and show you in a minute. But you can simulate it and that means that the uh, AI take over your uh, actions, but it plays out as if you're given the turn-based uh, strategy commands. Or you can watch the match, It'll basically skip out the sort of strategy side of it play it all in the background and you just watch the match play out as maybe you would do in sort of Football Manager 20, something like that. But we're going to play this match and show you how matches take place. As I mentioned, it's kind of a turn-based strategy, turn-based tactics, but also kind of a board game. Um, there's a game in the UK which is really popular worldwide, but I don't know how popular it was in America, but I know you've got your own kind of versions of your own sports. But that was Subutio. Uh, in the UK where it's like a soccer game with little plastic figures that you could move around the board You've got so many uh, actions to take per turn and then the the, uh, the sort of the turn switch to the other player to take his actions um, It's kind of how this plays you get three actions per turn You can see that at the bottom of the screen the little three little men uh, above where it says moves left And you can see we've got 21 actions each action takes up a few minutes You can see the top left hand corner how much time's gone. So Wickham have had their three actions, taken six minutes, and uh, now it's our turn. So at the moment, Wickham have the ball here, and you can move any player just by clicking on them and uh, choosing a new position. But as you highlight them, you'll see at the top of the screen, uh, as you highlight a player, you'll get their stats for accuracy, passing, defense, and control. Also, their energy levels and any special skills that they've got. So, we need to get the ball off of Wickham, so off of Purfoy, Purfoy uh, this player here. So, we're going to use our player here, Kennedy, to try and tackle Purfoy. So this is going to be one action. You can see the number when you've selected the action. We haven't actually committed it yet. Um, you can see the number above the, uh, the player is basically a chance of um, that action happening. So, you can see Kennedy has got a 36 chance, Purfoy has got a 16 chance of keeping the ball. I believe that's out of 100. Uh, so it looks like from this action, if we commit it, there's going to be a good chance that Kennedy is going to take the ball away from Purfoy. Not guaranteed, but it's a good chance. And indeed he has done that. So we've won back possession with our first turn. We've got two moves left. 20 overall actions before it's half time. So we can now pass the ball if we want to, or we can move one of our players. Uh, I think we'll probably pass. So we select our player here, and then we can choose who to pass to. There is a range in passing, so you can see we can only pass it to these three guys uh, as a maximum distance here. We can't get it up to the strikers yet, although I believe if your player has certain skills, like a long ball skill, 
they can pass longer distances. But for now, we're just going to roll this ball into Tooth. And then you commit the... Oh, if we commit... There you see the arrows come up there. We're going to pass... Oh, why can't we pass it? Let's try that again. Oh, I see. Sorry. So we've got um, at the top... I failed to mention, sorry, a bar's come up at the top here where we can choose different actions. Then we can choose a lofted pass. If you tap up on the D-pad, you get an explanation of what that pass does and how far it can go. We've got a normal pass. So if there are no opponents in the way, we can just roll it along the floor. 100% success rate. Whereas the lofted pass... Um, if the range, uh, let's have a look, your passing and range factor are compared, the further your teammate is, the higher the range factor is. If the range factor rolls a higher number, the lofted pass will foul and the ball will end up on the random tile next to the intended target. So that isn't always guaranteed. You can see here Kennedy has only got a 6 rating of making that pass. So there's a good chance that that lofted pass is going to go astray. Whereas if we do a rolled along the floor pass, as long as there's no opponents in the way, that will get a 100% accuracy and get the ball to tooth. Or we've got this special skill, a layoff pass. So a layoff pass allows you to direct the ball to a teammate one to three tiles away. The teammate will move into a neighbouring tile to receive the ball. No bonus actions as there are no opponents in the way of the pass. I think what that means, it's kind of like a through ball if you know soccer. And I think we can't do that at the moment because we've got this opponent standing in the way. So tooth can't sort of take that pass and run into the next square because he's blocked. I think that's what it's saying. Um, so just keep things simple for now. We're just going to do this roll along the floor pass. To tooth. And it makes it 100% accuracy. So that's turn two. Now on our next turn, we've got a chance here. Now, obviously Secular is nearby and he can tackle us. And there's a higher chance of making a tackle if you tackle someone from the front. Uh, we can stay on the ball if we sort of dribble the ball I believe we get a higher chance of keeping it for the next turn so Tooth could sort of put his foot on it and try and keep possession for our next turn or we can try and move some of these players around maybe bring Tunnard here out to the wing or you know out this way to receive a pass on the next turn but I think we're going to try and hold on to the ball so if we click down on Tooth click again and he's going to kind of put his foot on the ball there and he's going to try and shield it from Secular but he can't do it, and Secular gets in and gets the ball. So that's Wickham's first turn. And he was going for a lofted pass into the striker there, but our defender was in the way, and he blocked the pass. And the ball is loose. For Wickham's last turn, they've moved their player in, Dobell, to pick up the loose ball. So Wickham get possession just outside of our box. 18 minutes gone. I think what we will do is move uh, Milner up here, and that will leave the Wickham player here offside. So that means that he can't get the ball from this player on their turn. But either way, we're going to try and tackle Doibel now with Milner. And you can see we've got a better chance of winning the ball than Doibel has of keeping it. It's not always guaranteed. It's like a dice roll behind the scenes. So if you play board games, uh, these sort of like sports board games before, you know you sort of your stats influence the, the outcome. But basically, you're at the mercy of a roll of a dice. And the dice roll in here is done in the background. But you should get a rough idea. So a rough idea here is Milner has got a better chance of taking the ball than Dobell. And you see he does. And then for our last turn, I think we're going to roll the ball here into Boothman, or Boothman, just using a normal ground pass. And that's our three actions gone. 24 minutes gone. Wickham take their turn. It looks like they're trying to win the ball back, which they have done from a player called Hoa. And with their last turn, Looks like they're just putting their foot on the ball. So it actually gives you an explanation there now. The opponent holds the ball. The opponent has chosen the hold option. As a result, his control attribute increased by 20. Different actions, locations on the pitch, fatigue, weather, and other factors affect the attributes of players. So you get a nice little helpful pop-up there. So you also got this little pop-up here. You can uh, check what's affecting a player. Uh, to do that, I'll point the cursor at the footballer and hold down on the D-pad. And you can see here, he's holding onto the ball. So it pops up this really nice little window of uh, what stats are being affected. So because he's ho using the hold the ball action, his control has gone up 20, which is really going to help him keep hold of the ball. And it's just, again, more popping up of 
hints and tips. So we're going to try and get the ball off him here with Tooth. We're not going to manage it because uh, Hoare's got a better uh, defence stat than what we've got. Just having a look at the player's defence rating. Actually, our striker for some reason here, Sucksmith, has got a higher defence rating. So we're going to move him here. And then we're going to move him to try and take the ball. So he's got nothing affecting him. So they've got an even chance here. Both scoring 10. So it's going to be on the, like a 50-50 on the roll of a dice. Can we get the ball? We do get the ball. But we've also gone diving in. And Sucksmith has actually been sent off. You can see there on the left-hand side, he's got a little red card next to him. It means he'll be banned for three matches. If I just move the cursor down to him now. So we've lost that player. He's been ejected. And uh, we can get possession back. So you've got to be careful with your tackles. And our player intercepted the ball there. So they tried a ground pass, but our player was in the way. And we've intercepted the ball. But their player, Dobell, has won it back. And that's the end of Wickham's turn. And then we're nearly at half time here. So we're going to try and take the ball off Dobo again. And let's see if we can do a, a longer pass. We can try and get the ball up here to Titler. We've only got a lofted pass option. Yeah, we didn't have the accuracy from the player. But we can try and get the ball off Minter here. And we have done. So we're... We managed to get the ball back just outside of Wickham's half. We could have had a shot there if we'd kept hold of the ball. But the half-time whistle is gone. And that is half-time here between Wickham and South End. So we'll take on the second half here. But I hope you've seen from the first half there how this is, is very much like a, a sort of turn-based RPG even. Like a turn-based battle system. Um, and you can see with the amount of sort of instructions and stuff that I was looking at in the main menus. You've got sort of classes that you can be, you know, special abilities can be applied to the, the players. Um, all that sort of thing is taken from turn-based strategy games. So if you're a fan of turn-based strategy, you don't even have to be a fan of, you know, soccer so much really because, you know, you can sort of pick up the, the battle system as such from this, this game here if you're a fan of tactical RPGs. So let's try and get the ball up the other end. It's a short pass there. So for our second option, I'm just going to roll it into Titler. And I think here we should be able to have a shot on goal. We're quite a way out, so we're probably going to have a low chance and there's players in the way. So, But we'll have a shot anyway. We've got on a sort of an 11 rating of getting that on target. It's red, obviously, which means it's probably going to be blocked by the player in front of us. Um, but we're going to try it for a shot. We've got a precision shot. You see the options at the top. Or a power shot. So if you try a power shot, your accuracy is compared against the opponent's defence. If the if it intercepted, the ball rebounds into a random tile. Accuracy decreases over distance. Shooting from within the penalty area is most effective. Or a precision shot, your accuracy is compared to around 80% of the opponent's defence. Accuracy decreases over distance. Shooting within the penalty area is most effective. So precision shot you got more chance of, uh, of scoring, but that was blocked really easily. And that's Wickham's turn. See those little uh, numbers that pop up? I don't know what they are. I wonder if they are like an, some sort of XP that you can use to upgrade your players between matches. I, if I remember, I believe that's the case. We'll have to have a look when the match is finished. Let's just try and uh, get through the match now without talking too much. We can move in their players around. So they're holding on to the ball. Who's got a good defence stat can come out and tackle? I think this player here, Bond. Even chance, but we take the ball. I don't know what that six means next to Bond. You're going to get all these little pop-ups. It's like when you start an RPG for the first time and numbers are flying at you everywhere. So there's not a great chance of making that pass. Only a 17 score. So I think we're just going to roll it in here to Boothman for our last action. 70 minutes gone, so this match is nearly over. So it looks like this player here has got some... 
footballer is motivated, so he gets extra stats. So that's what that number is in the uh, star. I believe that's how many turns he remains motivated for. So that's not a good idea to try and win the ball back there. Need to find a player with a good defence rating, but we haven't really got one. So we're just going to have to try our best with Boothman. Push in the back. Free kick to Wickham in their own half, so we don't get to move any players around. But they've got a chance here. Dobell, now he could... Oh, he's running away, but he could have run into the space. Probably going to have a shot. Saved by our goalkeeper. And then we'll pick up the loose ball. Should be able to roll it into Bond here without... Oh, we can do a layoff pass, actually. I'll we'll have to have a look at those layoff passes work, because that didn't quite work as I was expecting. We don't want to do a lofty pass. But we do want to get rid of it. We don't want to hold it. So it looks like lofted pass is the only option we've got. We might have to take that option just to get rid of the ball. And if it goes astray, it goes astray. At least it's out of our penalty box. So we're in the 90th minute now. And that's a foul from Wickham. And our player, Boothman, is injured. So we need to make a substitution. Fenner. We can, because the free kick's in their half, they get to move up to four players around. We can also move two players. So it's saying here, if you take a, the free kick directly, you can uh, you get if you take the free kick straight away, basically a shot on goal, you get boosted accuracy, or you can lay the pass off to somebody else. So obviously we are going to pass, and we're probably going to get a shot on goal here in the last minute of the match. We're quite close in. And the shot didn't really get anywhere it was charged down by the opposing player but there's the full time whistle nil nil and uh, for our first match it wasn't too bad although we did have a player sent off and uh, a player injured now indeed they do get experience so that's really good they've got levels experience we can see here Milner has gone up a level and you can see they're getting those ratings from the men of the match award so the best three players get extra boosting their stats and level up Milner so he gets an extra passing and two extra defence stat boost oh, you even got stat bars look, RPG dream skill trees as well just so much in this game it's really going to be such a good game to dive into and um, learn all about, I'm really really looking forward to playing this more just meant to say, actually, before I go, a big shout out to uh, to Toplitz for uh, providing a review copy for this. Really appreciated from those guys. Give me a chance to look at this one. We're also going to be doing a full review, probably a review closer to the time because it's such a big game. I really want to get into it and uh, and f you know find out as much as I can before I give you guys my final opinion. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that little look at this one. Football Tactics and Glory, or Soccer Tactics and Glory, if you're in the US, out next week on the 22nd of January. So we just have a little flick around some other stuff here. Don't know what this is here. You can have a look at a team photo. <laughs> of all your players in a in a photo formation. So that's cool. I guess you could like take a picture of your best squad and save them off. Very cool indeed. Really like that. Loads and loads to look at. So if you're a fan of football games, football manager, st statistics, RPGs, turn-based battlers, 
all that kind of thing, then I would be having a little look at this one. Um, probably going to do some more videos on this actually before I get to the review. Just have a little bit more, get a little bit more used to how it plays. And uh, if you guys are interested, I will play out some more matches. If you've got any questions at all, just uh, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this one. It's nice to have a different sort of football game on the Switch. We've got sort of FIFA for the arcade style football manager, uh, which is really cool. New style manager, also a little bit like this, sort of a, a turn based -y kind of game. Um, so it's good to have another one like that. But uh, yeah, leave me a comment below. Leave me a like. Drop me a subscribe if you're new here. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.